So let's now work on solving the problem that we were given. Here, we are given a magnetic field that varies as a function of position along the x-axis in time. And the magnetic field is equal to minus 8.25 nanoteslas cosine of 1.38 times 10 to the fourth radians per meter x plus omega t along the y-axis. So our goal is to figure out which direction the wave is traveling, what the frequency of the wave is, and write the vector equation for the electric field based off of this. The first thing I want to do, however, is interpret the information we have here. This 8.25 nanotesla corresponds to the amplitude of our magnetic field, the 1.38 times 10 to the fourth radians per meter corresponds to 2 pi over the wavelength of our magnetic field, and omega, the angular frequency, corresponds to 2 pi times the frequency of our magnetic field. If you notice, we have a plus sign in front of the time term. This plus sign means that our wave is moving in the negative x direction. Let's put this information together to come up with the sketch of our magnetic field. Our magnetic field is moving in the negative x direction. So I'm going to create my coordinate system where I have a lot of space going to the negative x direction. So here's our positive x-axis. Our positive y-axis is vertical and our z-axis is coming towards us. So this is our right-handed coordinate system. Now you might be wondering, well, Mel, how do we know it's moving in the x direction and not the y direction? Well, we know that because of the x term right here. That tells us the axis that this, our electromagnetic wave is moving along. Now the one thing to note is at time t equals zero, this, and at x equals zero, the cosine term is the cosine of zero or one, which means that our magnetic field is at minus its amplitude. So I'll call this B naught for the amplitude of the magnetic field. And we start off with a negative amplitude and it's a cosine function. So our magnetic field oscillates like this to the left. As a reminder of the direction that the electromagnetic wave is moving, I'll just put this velocity vector above. Now, we need to ultimately come up with a function for the electric field. So we know that our electric field is going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field, and we know that our electromagnetic wave is moving in the negative x direction. We have to figure out, ultimately, what the function for our electric field looks like. So to help me, I'm going to sketch the electric field in this picture. Now we know it's going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field, so that means the electric field will oscillate along the z-axis, but will the oscillation begin along the negative z-axis at time t equals zero and x equals zero, or along the positive z-axis? Well, to help us, let's just look at what the cross product of our 
electric field and magnetic field looks like. Remember, the cross product of the electric field and the magnetic field tells us the direction of the velocity vector. Well, we know the wave is moving to the left, so the velocity vector is moving to the left. We know at time t equals 0, x equals 0, the magnetic field is pointing downward. So if we were to do the right-hand rule, we would do it kind of backwards where we know the result. The result has our thumb of our right hand pointing to the left, our palm is facing downward, so so if my thumb is pointing to the left and my palm is facing downward towards the second vector, that, mean my f that means my fingers is the direction of the electric field, and my fingers are pointing along the negative z-axis. Now this just comes from the version of the right-hand rule where we put our fingers in the direction of the first vector, which is the electric field, curl our fingers in the direction of the second vector, which is the magnetic field, stick our thumb out, and that's the direction of the third vector, the velocity, the cross product of E cross B. So we now know that at time t equals zero, x equals zero, the electric field has an, a negative displacement along the z-axis. So I'll put that over here, negative e naught, and then we will put the positive e naught here, and then our oscillations go like this. They have the same frequency as the electric field, And I could draw that a little bit better. Let me try again. So something like this. So our electric field starts off oscillating in the negative z direction, then in the positive z direction, then in the negative z direction, then in the positive z direction. So there's our electric field, and this gives us the wave traveling in the negative x direction. And so now that we have this, we know that our electric field function will look something like this. It will have an amplitude, but we're starting off oscillating on the negative z-axis, so I'll put a minus sign in front of that amplitude. It's oscillating as a cosine function. It has the same wavelength as the magnetic field. This wave is moving in the negative x direction, so we will put a positive in front of the t term. It has the same angular frequency as the magnetic field, and it's oscillating parallel to the z-axis. So there's the general form of our wave function for the electric field.